Order of the Great Sonic Commission, 1 p.m. June 8th, 2018. Stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. He thought that every time the white man took a picture of him, it was taking yeah. away part of his identity, his soul. Yeah. So he didn't know all the pictures. Yeah, there aren't very many. You, you don't find many pictures. I think no. there's one that I've ever seen. Yeah. Huh. But it, uh, we have a dog that's like that. You hold the camera. You have a dog like sitting bull or a dog yeah. that you want to stay You hold the camera and he, ears go down and he, he's gone. <laughs> Maybe he's a criminal. Yeah, maybe he is. <laughs> <laughs> Illegal alien. <laughs> Not a troll. <chihuahua>. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Sanctuary, <laughs> sanctuary farm out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take roll call, John. Here. Dale. Here. Mark. Here. Sean is on his way. And Troy is here. Are there any additions or corrections to the agenda? The only thing that's been added that I know of since you guys got the email is is the social services. And um, KLJ got oh, added and as KLJ. well. KLJ. Yep. Yeah. Motion to approve the agenda as presented. Motion, move, motion by Dale to approve the agenda as presented. Is there a second to the motion? A second. Seconded by Mark. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Take a look at the meeting minutes from May 18th. Are there any additions or corrections? on the bottom of page two, you should clean it up a little bit. Uh, motion by Wakefield to have RS Oyen put out for bids for putting tin on the on the Cooperstown County shop. Um, Um, yeah, so remodeling. Well, no, so we don't have two fours there. It's four bids, four pudding. Oh. Um, motion by Wakefield to have Oyen advertise. advertise bids. No, so advertise, advertise bids for putting tin on roof. That's all right. Advertised bids for putting tin on but, the Cooper's But not on roof. No. <laughs> yeah. What? No, not on roof. Tin on walls. Right. Oh, it's solicit. A motion by Wakefield to have RS Oyen solicit bids for putting tin on the county, Cooper's own county shop. All right? There you go. Yeah. yeah.
make a motion to, motion to approve the minutes and dispense with the reading. So moved by Mark to approve the minutes as corrected and dispense with the reading. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, bills. Um, I do have one that I we would like to get added, please. Um, underground vault and vaults and storage for two hundred dollars. What was that for? Um, it's for the storage of the microfilm. Oh, that's state. Yeah. Is that something we always pay? Or mm -hmm. is, we, have, have, we, have, we have records out of the state. Then? Yep, yep. Um, page four. So road, gas, oil, and fuel for 34.1960. And then again, out of the same account, Road, gas, oil, and fuel for fourteen ninety. Why are we drawing two checks out of the same account for the same purpose? Who's the vendor? What's that? Who's the vendor? Yeah, two different vendors. Is it two different ones? One's the Benford, Ben City Ball. Oh, I see Butler, but and and uh, and the other one's Arrowwood. Correct. Um, where's the? Where you at? Page four. Yeah, right below. Okay, oh, I see. Yeah, I'm Bay City Bulk and Arrowwood. Yep. Okay, I was looking below what I was saying. I was wondering why Butler Machinery was, was road, gas, fuel, and oil. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Who's this vendor? Um, that is a garnishment. What page? On page. They work for the county? Um, the employee that we're taking garnishments from their check, yes. We garnish their paycheck and then we have to send it to them um, on page 14. Does that make sense? Um, if somebody like owes for... Well, I know what it is, child support or something. Yep, yep. And so then we take that out of the check and then we pay them directly. I see. Mm -hmm. So that should show up over here. Over here, right? Mm -hmm. I see. That was page 14. No, I was on 14. I asked who that. And what account was Sean, that? Sean Road. It was a payroll. It was a, it's a garnishment against one of the employees' payroll. Somebody must have a dependent someplace. Or just some kind of a judgment. It wouldn't have to be child support. Hopefully it's not one of our elected officials. None of our concern. But it is. Any questions on the bills? <laughs> I notice Aberdeen Financial is not on there anymore.
Um, underground vault and storage. Underground vault and storage for 200. No second. Mm -hmm. Been moved by Dale to approve the bills as presented with the addition of the underground bolt and storage fees, seconded by Mark. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. John? Aye. Dale? Aye. Mark? Aye. Try votes aye. Motion carries. Hmm. Fuel as they need it, or do they buy fill their bulk tank as they need it? Mm -hmm. What I understand, they drive the maintainers up to the pump. Yeah, no, I know. I think they they'll come and they'll fill the, yeah, I know. fill yeah. that, but it's not. I think it's about four thousand gallons. Right, the tank. Just one. What do you reckon? Yeah. tried to do it so that they would bid off of the futures. So it would be X amount of dollars off the futures and both sides and could bid at the beginning of the year and wherever the futures go up or down, you, you wouldn't have to. So they're bidding their margin is what they're doing instead of just going and buying fuel day to day. We could lock in prices at the beginning of the year, which we probably should have done this year saved a few dollars anyway. Mm -hmm. And I tried to talk Wayne into doing something like that, but I don't know if he didn't understand what I was talking about or what, but. I think Dale, what Dale's talking about is on page seven here, another bill, another yeah. $5,400. That's why the question I believe was asked was whether it's bulk or on demand. Yeah. yeah. And it, of what I understand, they call, they call both places and then they, and then they'll get a price, and then they go with the cheapest one at a time. Right. But <clears throat> but I think they'd save a lot of time in monkey business if they just ask for bids at the beginning of the year. And I don't think the vendors want to lock in the price for the no. year. No, oh, they probably don't. I'm sure they don't. <clears throat> so that's why we've got three different vendors. That's why that is. Well, I suppose the maintainer up in Binford, they fill a lot of, they fill, you know, Lennis fills that one. Yeah, but we've got Airwood, in city bulk, and all this one's telling the country. Yeah. Okay. Got it. the reports. See the I guess I talked to Kelly all those deeds for those lots that they Haynes has sold got recorded this month. That's why there's a lot of time. Yep. Huh? A lot of. There's no. There's just more documents. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's 138 documents. Usually there's 30 to 60.
I'd move to approve the office report as presented. The move by Dale to approve the office reports as presented as our second. Second. Second by Mark. Discussion. Any discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Same sign. sign. Motion carries. KLJ. Okay. Brought our uh, construction engineering services agreement for the Box Elber Commercial Club East of here. Um, it's been, I guess, how, how that works is after, so after you guys made the selection, we talked about the local government at the DOT. And then we submit our um, hour summary. So the district reviews that since they are more in touch with the construction projects. So, um, Ed Pavlis reviewed that. We actually had, had a couple of hours for inspection on the box building installation, which I was trying to keep it keep the cost down, but I mean, I, I guess I see the point that we probably actually do need to be there for those few extra hours that you asked me to do. So, there's about uh, 350 man hours total for inspection on the job, and that uh, is an agreement before you there. 350 hours for inspection? Inspection and records, and since the reasons that are laid for it, we've got to submit a final record. So you're going to you're going to be on site. Well, people on the site, yeah, all the time. How many people well, do you have on site? Between some of the time, it'll be two. Um, so let's say if it takes some two weeks to put it in, and it's sixty hours a week, that's one hundred twenty hours. That's what we got in there for each of those people, but it takes about. 20 to 30 hours after the job's done to get the final records in. You've got somebody, you know, uploading stuff into the DOT's construction automated record system. It's called CARS. That's where all the documentation and payment stuff goes. So this could vary. Yeah, this is a, it's an hourly contract to that max. So whatever we use up to that amount. Because right. yeah. like that one up north, I don't think that took two weeks. No, but they never had two people on site either. There was always just one person there. Well, um, hopefully we can get by with that. It's just that. Are you sure? Well, mm -hmm. <clears throat> most of the time, that would be the case. But there's there'll be times where we're working on um, stuff at the lab. So for material testing, the foundation fill, we'll have one proctor test for that. That takes about ten hours to run proctor. So hopefully we can combine it with other work in the lab up in our office and that will be the six density test. Those are all more piece. Borrow excavation, one doctor. They'll actually be with the depth of that fill, there's probably 29 density tests with that. Um, aggregate surface course plus 13. Sometimes they with the small quantity they'll actually weigh that, but just be on the safe side and put in enough time to run three gradations on that material. And then, like for the actual installation of the box culvert itself, there's only um, 32 hours for Engineer One to be on site for that, which should get set in two days. I think. Yeah, no, so this is spelled quarter. out somewhere. What's that? This is all spelled out somewhere. I mean, it'd uh, be hours. the hour summary. Yeah, I don't know if I have that. It's. Oh, I just handed that. It's that bigger piece of sheet of paper. Oh, um, it's underneath that oh, thing. It's underneath that top. Oh, I'm sorry. So that's what the state reviewed to come up with. Nice, huh? Okay. So are all these people coming out of the Devil's Lake office to do this work then? Uh, no. Um, me and myself, just for a few hours for oversight of it, Anthony Herman will be out of our office, Glenn Salisbury will be out of our office in Devil's Lake, Logan is out of uh, Valley City. I was going to have Matt Jennings out there, but he moved to the, our Fargo office and we'll be working on projects there this summer. So they're actually a little bit closer than we are. It's about an hour and a half from us to there, and it's about, I don't know, 45 minutes or so from Valley, I think. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. Hmm. But. And, and that may, you know, that may be adjusted some too. I just want to be on the safe side with that. Are they short of people in Valley or something, or why? I guess that's who we had on our team when we put the proposal together. So that we kind of wanted to follow that. 
It, it just seems very excessive, especially in the record keeping part of it. Weekly records, <clears throat> 10, 18, 48 hours for weekly records, four different people doing that. That, that seems excessive to me. Well, all I know, all I know for sure is when, when you see these estimates, yes, it could be less, but almost always it's within a few hours of this. In, in my experience with these, of watching it through the county. And I was trying to, you know, I was watching that, you know, putting that together with that in mind too, that it, to keep the cost down. And like I said, the district actually asked us to bump up our hours to for more inspection, the engineer one position. If it isn't done right, who's on the hook? Well, a contractor has a bond, performance bond. So, I mean, we make, our job is to make sure that we're make, testing all the materials, making sure everything's getting put in right. You know, we're sur sur surveying it and tracking all the quantities as far as actual construction quality that falls to them. We help ensure that happens, but. That's but you're not you're not uh, liable for any, even though you let the bid or made the, and uh, tested the soil and made sure all the aggregate makes grade. If if we're at fault, I mean, if we do something yeah. wrong, yeah. But if if it's the contractor is responsible for their own quality control, and we don't have any. You know, we don't have control over their means and methods to get to the desired result. We test, we, you know, we test every foot lift on the borrow material. We test every six inches on the gravel for density, so it doesn't, you know, settle. It's not going to be mushy when we're done. And that's why that we put that in the design this way. You know, sometimes on gravel roads they won't put density test again, but you could end up with a real mess if you don't test the, you know. Do the proctor, mm -hmm. do the density tests, because that controls your moisture too, which is really important with other clay soils. And then there's some survey time in there too for you know staking alignment. And then you actually have to shoot the borrow pit before and after per step. I had, we missed that on one project, and we ended up having to come in and recross the whole project corridor before and after instead of getting it out of the pit. And then we had to fight with the contractor about shrinkage factors, how much it compacted coming out of the pit on the road, and it's cheaper this way. that we have an uh, engineer for this is engineer, isn't it? And it's federal aid, so yeah. it's got BRO funds. <coughs> so that's, it's been through the DOT, we're required to follow their documentation requirements. They've got a whole manual about, uh, about that thick, the construction records manual you have to follow. <coughs> Motion to approve the engineering services agreement with KLJ. So move. Moved by Mark to approve the engineering services agreement with KLJ for the installation of the box culvert northeast of Cooperstown. Is there a second to the motion? No, I'll just I'll say there's ninety dollars of record keeping this same thing. When you add it all up. Yeah. That's insane to me. I've never done them. I don't know. But you can produce a pretty big pile of records in 90 hours. No, I don't sure they do. What other options do we have, John? What would you do if you were the, if you were the, uh, the same for it? would have already <laughs> been put in a long time ago. <laughs> Is there a second to the motion? Oh. Seconded by Dale. Now we can have discussion. Yep. And then I guess that you know, since you guys did the RFP, 
the federal aid is being used for engineering services too. So the chair of the Montevere County House Bill 1176, I think it is, CNOC. Funny is that 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 share of this amount is 724314. So as long as it's somebody else's money, we should be well, responsible. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I, I guess we follow the procedure that, you know, the, the process, the way it always, it always works. And like I said, this is, I was trying to keep the numbers low and the DOT actually had yeah. to bump up the one. And these are you know, based on our audited rates, too, which every two years we have to have a, an audit through DOT. They look at all of our expenses and they, you know, cap our rates based on that. You've heard the old adage of the fox and the hen holes, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> at what point, uh, at what point, uh, just for my own, when did the federal or the state start mandating us that we had to have engineering on every culvert or whatever that we stick in? Or? It's in such a cold that anything over it's about 150, I think. Is that what it is? Right, that price. I think it just changed in the last couple of days. 150, what? Over 150,000 asset engineering services, if it's state funded, I believe, and then federal has their own guidelines on that. I think that counts for both. I'll ask for the question. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. John. No. Dale. Aye. Mark. Aye. Sean. Aye. Troy votes aye. So carries. You have some other stuff? No. Nope. Since that's already voted on, if you had any other questions, we'll make sure that no bounds right now. I don't. We need the lead. Yeah. Well, I guess the lead here. Um, the blue flags are for you, Samantha. Excuse me, what? The blue flags are for you. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, uh, basically, we have no pain to okay. today. So I brought my own. Self sufficient. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess I didn't want to have to spell it remote. That uh, bridge that had the uh, word code 3 on it, um, shot me if you didn't come up and go through that with Wayne. I did. Um, in the last couple weeks, I'm not sure what day it was, but it was up there. So there'll be probably an invoice for three hours on that, on that Decker Bridge. We don't have to close it yet. What's that? <laughs> I guess not. I think you would have told me. But I was going up north. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Did you guys hire an engineer today, Dale? I did. Good. We did the interviews and uh, they selected doll consultants. Okay. We can do social services if Devine doesn't hear. So Bruce Ellertson called me this morning from, he's on the Nelson County Social Service Board as well as the County Commission up there. And the County Commission in Nelson County would like to move ahead with forming a social services district with us. Mm -hmm. And the reason this came about, I then I I called Mary Langley afterwards, after I talked to Bruce, and she had gotten a visit from Terry Trainer here a few weeks ago or a couple weeks ago, and apparently the state is going to take some kind of action to consolidate some of these little social services offices to gain some economies. So I think the message was if you get along with somebody, you might want to think about forming a district or the state's going to tell you who you're going to form it with. And so Nelson County, you know, I think their fear was 
or whatever you want to call it, was that they were going to be forced to go with Grand Forks, Grand Forks County or Ramsey County, somebody with, with more population, that they would kind of be the stepchild. <laughs> so with that said, uh, steel and trailer forming a, a district, uh, Eddie Wells Foster forming a district, uh, I don't know who else outside of our little world, but they would like us to go through that process with them. Um, there will be some issues along the way. I have one question. Yep. Are they just two county districts, or could could we could you go to three? Oh yeah. So who steel who? Steel and bar and trail are forming the district. Eddie Foster and Wells are together. Yep. Well, Nelson Griggs Steel and Trail. Yeah, I mean, I think the more the merrier. Five that way here. But, but on the other side of the coin, it's pretty hard to get a whole bunch of people on the same page at the same time. It might have to be a step-by-step -step process <laughs> later on. And and the the state is probably gonna get us there anyway at right. some point. I mean, and when we we take our four employees from Griggs County and whatever they have up in Nelson County, um, that's not going to gain you enough economies of scale to spit at. So, since the state is the state's funding this thing, the social services one hundred percent now. So they're going to at one point, at some point, they're going to they're going to make some of these decisions. So, if, and and with that said. If I don't know to what degree, but when when the state took over the funding of social services, we pretty much took the position that social services was going to live within that budget. Now I think Nelson County is kicking in some. They are general fund money. Well, we know they are from our discussions with them in that building that went, and that came about. So, so either. I mean, as we go through this process, we'll learn more. And I don't know the specifics right now off the top of my head. But keep in mind that unless there are actual economies of scale realized in this districting, there might be some differences from a funding standpoint between the counties, so if we want to, if we want to hold the line, you know, and then we're going to have to convince those other guys that that's the way it should be done. Um, the other thing is that is going to be a deal or issue difference. Um, Nelson County pays 100% of a family health, I think. Plus, their people are at a higher wage scale. So, <coughs> as we go, you know, if we agree to go down this trail, I mean, at least start down the trail, you don't have to get to the end. Um, which and I think we should, because Mary is going to come back with a budget if we approve this process. Um, and that's when we'll have to address those issues because then we'll have the numbers in front of us. Yeah. To play devil's advocate, and if we truly believe that economy of scale is what we're after, why don't we force the issue and not form a joint partnership with Nelson County, which will in turn then force them into a larger conglomerate and which will force us into a larger one. You know, if, if you can't stand alone 
and you're not willing to team up, then the, 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 then the then you have to go somewhere else, and it appears like somewhere else already ha is teamed up. So you'd force the issue. You'd you'd make it from you'd make it from three to two, conceivably. I mean, we would either go this way or that way, and Nelson County would do the same thing. We're kind of unofficially a district right now. I mean, what what financially would be better? I mean, we're sharing the director. We're living at a hundred percent. We're not taking out money out of the general fund. But you could conceivably offer better better use of the state money because if sure. you could have forced economy of scale, then maybe some of these employees you would maybe if you have two counties together, you get by with six employees. Let's just use a number. And maybe sure. if you have the three sure. counties employees, you get by with less for the right. management part of it. Right. Maybe you force that. So so then then in essence, even though Griggs County is in pain, there's better use of those dollars, not going for administrative part of it, but going to the actual social services part of it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that should be the goal, in my opinion. Well, then we can force that. I don't think you can. Well, if, if, we, if we don't. Only if the state follows through with consolidating. For sure. Yeah. And what their, their timeline is for, for going through with that. Yep. Would there just be one office then, or still two, or how? I mean, we're just talking about a process here, right. correct? Right. That's going to become at the at the this in this next legislature. Correct. Right. Right. Should because there's this trial. This has been the trial period, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, it's just food for thought. I mean, it doesn't. We we can we can team up with Nelson County and then still switch. Yeah, you'd be, you know, you'd... We're just going through a talking period now, see where we would negotiate through. Evidently, the talking period be became pretty real if these other counties are already teaming up and yeah. they're talking the same thing and Nelson County's already voted on it. I don't think... Uh, I'm not quite sure why we were not aware of it before we're, today. We're only five minutes, months into the new deal and it's already yeah. <laughs> yeah. started some changes. On the other on the other hand, if we don't go with with Nelson County because of the arrangement we have, then we would have to, in the interim, find a new director. I think so. Yeah. Again, I was playing devil's advocate, and this there's two different sides of this thing. Yeah. It, it's just so because I'm quite certain that, that we wouldn't get to keep the director. I think if we split up, Nelson, the director Mary would probably go with Nelson County, where sure. she was originally came from. And then we'd be left out either lacking director or having to put up with whatever the state was going to give us, send us to, or wherever we could latch on to. And without a mandate, we couldn't forcibly say we're going to Foster Eddie. They could say, no, you're not coming here. So, just so we know all the sides of the issue here. Right. Is this even going to be big enough for a district? No, no. absolutely not. It's just, I can't imagine. No. It's still smaller than many counties are with the yeah. two combined. Yeah. <coughs> so I guess my only concern would, would be, as Troy spelled out, is, is, is to this point here, we were letting it be in the county, the state was in charge, we were letting the state be solely in charge of the funding and, and not allocating any other county funds to that. And that, that would be my red line that wouldn't cross. If they want to be in charge, they have to be in charge. They can't, they can't be in charge and then get to spend Send county money. Bill. If, I mean, the reason they took over was because just that. Yeah. They, were given county, they were given the county money. We were in charge. They didn't like the way we were spending the money. It, so it, it can't be one way. What's good for the goose has to be good for the gander. So I'm going to... Can we operate without a director? Okay. I don't think so. I don't think they'll let you. I think what they do is force us to go to Barnes or someplace that would take us wherever that is. 
maybe steel trail. You know, I, I have no idea. But well, as long as we're not funding it, I'm not so sure that I care because I don't think we're going to. I don't think the state is going to let it have let it just these two little tiny counties merge together and then they're going to be done with it with this process. There's it's, it's just a step. In, <laughs> it's just a step along the way. Once once you get rid of the county offices and you have these districts, then the state. Is will feel f pretty free to come in and combine districts because there's no county. Anyway, now it's just a district, and they're funding them, and they're in charge of them, and now they'll just do whatever they want to do. And I'm just fine with that. If it costs the state taxpayers less money for administration and more of that, those resources can go to the program recipients, I'm happy. I would hope that's the end goal. I hope so. <laughs> you know. Anyway, so would, do you guys have any? Do you want to pursue this? Well, I think we should at least pursue it. Like yeah. I said, we don't have to finish it. But okay. Uh, I would move that we uh, pursue joining a joint district between forming the forming, forming the district. A joint district between Nelson and Greeks County Social Services. Been moved by John that we form a district, a social service district with Nelson County. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Seconded by Sean. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. David. I don't. Um, it's not two o'clock yet, so I don't think we can even do that until the time in case there's someone here to right. has to hear what has to hear what's going to transpire. We can talk about this, though, so can we? No. Probably not. Okay. Um, then, right, right, Jamie. Jamie, you yeah. can do your spiel that you gave me yesterday, then. Okay. So I was informed yesterday afternoon that this was never put in the paper. Um, and never, or just not twice wasn't put in the paper to my knowledge at well, all so then no one's going to show up anyway but so no one will show up but i think we have until the 30th of june for him to turn in all his paperwork um this hearing is supposed to be held within the first 10 days of the month so it's i think what should happen it should open it should be recessed it should be put in the paper and advertised to cover our butts i know it's supposed to be held these days but I think if, I think it cre could create some problems if someone was to come wanted to come in and we don't have anything. Um, Suppose another caravan is coming from Binford, from Bismarck. <laughs> I don't think so. But I, so I, I think that's <laughs> the thing to do would be to have it today. To get a deal designated driver. <laughs> have it be and have all the stuff ready in case no one comes in, so he doesn't have to scramble to get it done for the thirtieth. Um, Thank you, brother. But then Thank have you. have the hearing. Just recess the hearing and continue it on until the next next commission meeting. And if no one comes in, then he can turn to paperwork. But I think that would be the right thing to do since no one knew about it today. Okay. So did anybody know about it other than us? I put it on the website. Okay. So it was. It, okay. So yeah. So we just got to wait till two o'clock before we do that. Right. Or sometime after that. Probably the last thing in the agenda. I mean, we could do it anytime. If we're going to leave the meeting in recess for two weeks, it don't matter. Do you want me to come back at two? I think you have to. Okay. I don't think there's any other stuff I can take. You have to wait until two o'clock. Okay, thanks, David. Thank you. Yeah. Go sit in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> That DS thing, I already, we already had approved that, and I came in and signed it. Yeah. yeah. That had been previously approved back when Bob was still here. He yeah, asked so if he could submit those grants. Right. I forgot. Cautionary and, and so that was approved yeah. two years ago. 
yeah, the, the approval to, to submit them, but they just never got submitted. Right. Right. North Dakota PERS, should we talk about that? Have you guys, have you been, where did I read that North Dakota PERS is going up another 17% this year or something? In the uh, county. Estimated revenues and expenses yep. for budgeting. So the percentage now is what, 16.2? For what the county pays? Yeah. Um, What's our premium? For health insurance is five. No, 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 no. no. For, for retirement. Retirement, yeah, 15.15. Um, 15. That was 14 points. You know, it went up, it went up, it went up last year. It's 15.2. Last way. The county pays uh, fifteen point three one. That was a good trade. Uh, seven percent for d deduction number seventy five, seven point one two for se uh, deduction seventy six, and one point one four for seventy nine. And then for the sheriffs, it's 15.31. And that was with the increase, when we had an increase of 16% last by you know? That's reflected in there. Was that health insurance? I think that was health insurance that went up and not the retirement. No, the PERS went up. PERS health insurance. Um, well, I will look at that. Um. I guess it's a moot point, really. I mean, what are we going to do about it? No. Did we ever get an answer about? They are going to be taking um, these questions. Have never been asked of them before. I'm sure not. And so they went to a board meeting, and um, and they weren't comfortable making a decision at that time. So they are going to be talking about it at their next meeting and getting back to me. I think their next meeting's the 21st. I don't know if I'll have information to you by the 22nd, but for sure July 6th, I will hopefully have more information for you. You know, if they come with a number of what it would cost for us to get out of it all together, I mean, with some of the employees that their employees rather go with a W with a what did you call it? Uh, 401k? Yeah. Well, I think we could give them a choice. I don't think we would want to force the... Well, if we quit PERS, we would. No, you wouldn't. No, the, the money would still be there. They would still be entitled to it. Oh, I see. They're the best. ones that have paid in for years. Invested after three years. Oh, They're, really? Yeah. But maybe Troy can explain it. I know he can explain it better than I, but for these, for people that aren't going to stay in it for their whole yeah. career, it's better to be in a 401k, you know, what, why go oh, there? Absolutely. You know, because a defined benefit is, is exactly that. It doesn't matter what the premium is to the county or the place. <clears throat> your, your retirement is based on your years of service and your high five salary, I think. I don't know. I think it's the last three actually. Three. <laughs> at no at NODAC it was high five. <clears throat> the way these things are playing out, the the actuarial calculations are so far off that they just get from the employer standpoint, they get so prohibitive. And from the employee's standpoint, unless they stay on the job for 35 years, they're not a very good income stream after retirement. So, I mean, and people, industry has been going away from these things for 30 years. I remember when AT&T and some of those big companies started doing away with them a long time ago and going with a defined contribution, like a 401k. Well, if the county puts a thousand dollars into your 401k, it's yours. It don't matter when you leave. <laughs> it's not just a portion of it, there's 
it's all it's not some actuarial calculation. Like I worked at Nodak for twenty years, and when I quit, I barely got the principal that Nodak paid in there for those twenty years. There was no growth on it, and that's kind of how that's. They're really abusive if you don't spend your whole career in within that. Within that, uh, is the teacher's retirement? Is that? It's the same thing. That's the same Only idea. thing is the teacher's retirement is going to 30% this year. Mm -hmm. It's at 30. 30% like of gross salary. So when oh. teachers tell you they don't make enough money, make sure you take that into account because it's a humongous expense. Wow. And, and I think if you've been hired after a certain date, the Rule 85 is now Rule 90. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yep. So now you got to work longer. Yeah. They're doing the same thing Social Security did. Looks like it's not going to pay you out. So yeah, right. I mean, the, 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 only, the only way to fix... Well, the, the, because North Dakota PERS is so underfunded. Yeah. So they keep jacking the premium trying to catch up because their, their, their investments don't do what they say they're going to do. And gonna, so then if they lengthen the years of service requirements and increase the premium, they might get... The, stop the bleeding a little bit but why as an employer or why as an employee would you put up with that abuse I mean it, I think it's silly it, because even and I don't want I don't think the county you know the, the originally the the county and the employees split this cost at some point the county commission decided to pay the whole thing I don't know why I don't know what the negotiation was whatever but I have never heard of anybody getting 15% in their 401k as an employer match. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. when, so at my work, I think the bank puts in two, and then for every two I put in, they'll put in one up to four. So if I put in eight, they'll put in four. Yeah. So, and I don't, I don't think it, it probably wouldn't be fair unless we did something different with salaries for incoming employees. But I would be more in favor of having like, okay, we're gonna put in four percent, and we'll put in one for every one you put in up to a cap of 10 or something like that. Um, but I, I don't think going down this trail is going to be in anybody's best interest. I just don't. Other than the employees that are almost vested. I mean, we, the they, employees they, that are in this program, we almost have to allow Absolutely. them to stay there if they want to. No, I mean, when, when, uh, NODAC got rid of theirs after I quit. Mm -hmm. They got rid of their defined benefit. Um, all the old employees that were in it for 20 years stayed. I mean, we're stuck yeah. in there for them. I mean, it would be not in their best interest to, to have that go away now. No, no. And, and but so we can freeze the 15.31 where it is from a county standpoint. Sure. So. And then don't keep and then the increases that have to come out of the employees. Right, until they were on par with, I mean, which would never happen. It would, well, and then not never. It might get yeah. to 30% at some time. Yeah, I, you I pay teachers are not. Um, if ND PERS held that, um, well, it's no. estimated to of a 17% biennium increase. What's that? Um, ND PERS health is. Um, estimated of a 17% biennium increase. Not the retirement. Not the retirement. I don't think so. I haven't heard anything about it. Hmm? I haven't heard anything about it. It's every two years, and it's in with the health insurance. I thought it was the retirement no. that was changing. No. The health was, was farmed out to Sanford. Sanford. And it's for two years. But it starts July first, so it's due, due this July. Yeah. Well, nevertheless, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. None of this. 
this problem is still here. Mm -hmm. It just wouldn't affect the employees as far as because there wouldn't be any increase in the in the PERS retirement. But that is supposedly going to be as what was her name what was here? Um, Shannon. Yeah, she said they were going to ask for an increase in the retirement to this next biennial. To try to shore it up. Mm -hmm. Because it, you know, it, it was it. Yeah, Karen. Sharon. Sharon. There we go. Because you know, it was it was down to what, fifty eight percent funded, you know, when it, in, in two thousand ten. Plus, they're going to have this big and then they, baby boomer thing. Yeah, then they increased there. it, and, and now it's it's at seventy percent funded, but it should with the stock market the way it's went in the last eight years, it it should have been back to healthy, and it isn't. What when the downturn takes place? Look what's going to happen here. Um, you know, I don't think it would be out of hand to 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 have a resolution that new hires are just offered a four hundred one k. I don't think it'd be out of hand to offer the option to the existing employees to participate in the four hundred one k. Their PERS would still stay, their retirement would still stay intact. It, you know, the, it, it seems like a good deal if you're there for 50 years, but look at the risk that an elected employee takes. What happens if they don't get elected after 4, 8, 10, 12 years? What, then all of a sudden, everything that was put in there, as Troy laid out, is just principle, possibly. Maybe not even that. Well, you could probably leave that in place. You could leave that in place, I but believe. But by the time you get to your retirement age, that number is going to be kind of tiny. Yeah, but but you would have you would you, it could stay in place. It's probably going to be, it's probably not going to lose principal. No. No. And then and then the no, because if you waited until your retirement age to take it, it would just be in the formula. Yeah. It would be the years of service times your high salary times whatever the multiple. I think is. once you're invested you can actually take a portion of it too and can yeah. roll it out. Right. So if somebody's not too deep in it yet, they might mm. So and and, and so to take, I'll have to take four hundred one k and roll what's left. Out. Oh, roll yeah, it yeah, into the four hundred one k. Sure. Exactly. So if you gave the but it's not a hundred percent of what it's been put away from you. It's a port, just a portion. I forget what the percentage. I think well, you, I think it's the seven percent, and I think they're getting an employer portion of the seven percent. Yep. So if you gave if you gave the those option those for the existing down, employees to manage between those two accounts as they deem necessary, all right. And 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 I think it would be responsible to say that any increases in the retirement or any percentage increases, any dollar increases in the retirement are, would be the responsibility of the employee. Future ones. Future increases. You know, if you look at, there, there are, as, as Sharon told us when, she, when we asked her the question, um, what percentage or what counties have this system in place that we have, and she said, well, she didn't answer it exactly, but she said there are some counties that, that pay the full amount, or some counties that the equal shares, and there are some counties that don't pay anything. Whether the employee, the employees. I think are, you have to pay seven. I, I think the employer has to pay seven or. I think so. I, I think sounds right. I think oh, the employer. Well, that's, that was the impression I got from her. If you participate in. Yeah, if you participate. Right. Seven. Only thirty-five counties participate. Right. Yes, I think that's where John's saying is that you don't pay anything without that employee, but then you're not participating. Right. So the that wouldn't be a real that wouldn't be a real burden on on anybody. It would it would kind of draw a line for the county for any future increases. Uh, it would leave it at the fifteen percent or point three where it's at now, but it would give the the employees the option to do what they wanted with their money if if they seem. Right. But, I mean, it would give them the option. They don't have an option right now. Yeah, see if that's... We would almost have to... Uh, interview some... Absolutely. ...plan administrators. I believe so. And because we want, we want to have the best plan uh, for the... Or, or with the most options. If we were gonna, if we were gonna offer four hundred one k, maybe what we should do is allow the elected officials to choose a provider. 
I think we'd give them an option. I think we could have a county provider, and I think we'd give them the option to do what they, whatever else they wanted with it. They could, they could, they could pick their own provider also, as they could anyway. Mm -hmm. If you have a four hundred one k, I think you have to have one. I mean, at the bank, I can't. Our four hundred one k administrator is what layers. I I have an Edward Jones account, but that's not. A, connected to my 401k contributions. The bank makes the contributions directly to the to the administrator well, because then, it's pre-tax. Well, then, then we should probably interview and let the employees decide what administrator they want. That's what I just said. Okay. That's what I meant. Okay. If it's Bell Bank, Alaris, Bank Forward, right. whoever, somebody that has an investment group, you know, mm -hmm. where we don't have an investment arm what would you like me to do going forward contact some of these people do you want me to get the feel up from the employees at all or just well I think they would come to the meeting with the I think we're, we're mostly talking about future hires mm -hmm. so but but the employees would also have access to the 401k right. if they chose to put in themselves. Right. So from that stamp, from an administrator standpoint, and, and may, I mean maybe we should, we, at some point we're going to have to take some kind of action. Mm -hmm. But for now, I think you should maybe contact some of these institutions that administer 401ks. Mm -hmm. yep. And and set up presentations or whatever, however they do it, and you guys should tell us which one you prefer. Right. Okay. So, so we do this outside of you guys. Mm, well, I think so. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, but it'll have to be. It'll have we'll to be approve voted it. On. We'll have, we'll yeah. have to prove it. Yeah. Well, I think that everybody, should, if it's going to be something that's coming live, I think. The employees and you guys should participate in any Well, it doesn't have, it doesn't affect us. No, it doesn't, I guess. But I still think it would be prudent to have you guys there. And somebody to listen. At least maybe one. Yeah. So that it's not a meeting and. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, I know, Nate Dale. Yeah, no, I mean, we <laughs> we, we could be there as long as we ask non-biased -bi questions, so that the. Employees, because maybe the employees don't know the questions to ask, and maybe we're a little closer to it, we can ask the right question. They, we certainly be there, but I wouldn't want to be there to try to influence the outcome of it. No, no, I don't think that would. Because the outcome of it is going to be whatever. If we decide to go to a four hundred one k, that that is a decision of the county commission. You know, it, it, once once that's decided, then to let the employees participate in picking or pick the provider, that you know that would be fine. Wouldn't we only have an issue if we have to share in it? I mean, if we have to, well, we will be, we will we will be sharing in it. But I mean, not necessarily because they could just take it out of their income and as uh, out of their check. We wouldn't have to match or anything. Also, it's so so they're forming their own group is basically for the existing what employees. There would be no match to the four hundred one k if they're if they're still participating in PERS. But they can yeah. participate in on their own if they want through yeah. Yeah. through the county. Well, well, we would still have to set up a participation rate for the new employees or for employees that were going to drop out of the PERS to join right. the four hundred one k because otherwise right. there would never be any reason to do that. If right. you get, if you get nothing, if you only get to put your own money in there. There's no reason for that. Now it wouldn't have to be the fifteen percent because the four hundred one yeah. is going to yield more than the fifteen percent into the PERS does. But there would have to be somewhere where that was uh, on par or close to being on par. The, the main point of this I see is is stopping any further uh, commitment by the county to these rising rates. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we're at fifteen percent participation, that's all the higher we should be until it gets to thirty-one percent. At, at which point, we would have half a percent, and the, the employee would have half a percent. I'm quite sure by the time it gets to thirty-one percent, that the system would be bust, and there'll be some. I mean, there'll be something else going on. 
What's the, in North Dakota PERS, what's the death benefit? Um, Spousal death benefit. Is it 50%? Five or 10,000. Just a, just a life insurance? Oh. No, no, the, oh, payout, yeah. the payout. It depends. You got choice. So you can do, you take a reduction if you, first of all, if you, you take a reduction if you die, your spouse can collect it till she dies. There's one if you die that's done. There's, there's what, four or five options. When you, and it depends on. You can take a lump payout. You can but every, yeah, but everything's got to, you know, it's like a. 20 30 percent reduction if you take a lump payout or so and it depends whether you contribute to a separate uh, to a separate uh, 457 plan to your your rate on that for death benefits so when you decide you got like four or five options to pick from when you you can just do it yourself, collect the full amount. If you had your wife, it's a reduced amount. So. so would it be out of line to, to have a motion that new hires are, would be put into a 401k and the, any increases to the PERS retirement would be the responsibility of the employee? And then the option once. Hey, okay, we can work that way. Uh -huh. We can have this discussion now, but I think we need a few more employees, maybe, and talk to them a little bit about what we're thinking and and uh, and how we're heading, how we're looking, and see what they think. And well, uh, it wouldn't matter to the ones that are here now. No, because no. So why do they need? To I don't discuss well, that. We need to do that. Um, was it one of the questions them. to them um, what would happen if we kept these employees and then just started trickling out? Wasn't that one of the questions? They don't seem to be able to answer that, so let, let's, let's make the motion. And if, if the motion flies in the face of what they haven't done, it's pretty hard to make us do something before they had a rule in place. And we're just, we're just offering options. They, correct? To the... New. To the existing the, employees, the new employees, no, there is no option. There's going to be 401. Mm -hmm. Right, we're going to draw the line. We, we, we have to, in my estimation, we have to, we have to somehow curtail um, the state, the county's obligation to this program because the program, the program, if it goes the same way as all the rest of these programs go, it's going to implode. It implodes, yeah. and and that's fine if it implodes, but we don't want to go down that road. But we're not mandated or anything like that by the state that county employees have to be in to purge? You don't have, you don't have to oh, participate. Only 35 counties participate. Oh, sure, as you said. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and again, we wouldn't be throwing anybody out of the PERS program. Yeah. We would just be limiting yep. future access, yeah. and we would give the employees... So the only way we're ever going to work our way out of it and not be... Abusive. I bet it would right. be the same way with TFFR. I bet schools don't have to participate. They, huh? No, they don't. That's a, but that's a union. Thing. Yeah, I was that, that say. might be a little stickier. So I make a motion that we restrict new hires to a 401k, that we offer the option to existing employees of the 401k, and that we make any increases in the PERS retirement responsibility of the employee until the employee employer are on par. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Well, you know, I guess the discussion would be then from this point forward, then Samantha, you need to get with the employees and make sure that they understand that nothing's Make sure nobody gets hired before we get an administrator in place and figure well, out. Yeah, I, I, I think I think if if this passes, I think. I mean, it's just a math problem. That bridge is that bridge is done. Any new hire is is going to be on the four hundred one k program, I know, but unless the state have, says. But we don't we have one. I know. But even if you've only been in a year or two, you might probably want to just yeah, drop if off. If you're, it'll be up to them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're a recent employee within the last two, three, four years, yeah. you want to. And and we'll have to set we'll have to set the. 
county's contribution mm -hmm. to these four hundred one k's, so so that it is somewhat on par with the existing payout you can expect from the PERS. And you also have to. The argument for the PERS program is, in lieu of wages, in order to attract quality employees, they offered the retirement. Again, it's kind of pie in the sky. If you're an elected official, how do you know you're going to yeah. going to get elected? 15 yeah. times, 25 yeah. times. So I think they should have the ability to do either or. Or even if you're an employee, whether you're going to stay for Whether you're going to stay. So, so you know, that kind of put a ball and shackle on some of the employees. Well, if I've put this much money into it, now I, even though I'd like to go somewhere else, I can't. Yeah. It, it, it frees everything up without being abusive. I mean, the county's not being abusive to the employee. This is you're giving the employee more leeway other than a raise in the PERS rates, which will be in, which won't be much. I mean, that's not going to happen or they're not going to push that much higher. I read that wrong if that's I didn't I did not read that that there was a health insurance increase. I thought it was it'll a return. Push higher. It'll just be it'll be slower. That's, yeah. yeah. But it gets us away from the liability. Of right. It, it, now now this now this basically our, our, our defined benefit has been Realize so they're yeah. they're from here for here forward yeah. there is no yeah. now it's a defined contribution uh, for the county standpoint correct that makes sense yep any more is there any further discussion seeing none we'll proceed to vote John aye Dale aye Mark aye John aye three votes aye motion carries you'll get in touch with everybody with the Absolutely. You have to get in touch with some of these. Bank I don't know. Yeah, bank forward. I don't know how many of these local institutions have a have a. Uh, uh, Rorick Financial does the. So it's uh, just. Do you want me to try to get local here, or? It doesn't matter. Okay. I mean, Rorick Financial does the does the, the uh, and that's schools. not and that's not local. No, that's Fargo. Right. Bell, Bell Bank is Fargo. I, from an employee standpoint, Samantha, most of the time you can choose how, how you want to invest. I mean, all the time you can choose. <clears throat> so from my standpoint, um, if you're, if you're going to watch this stuff online and whatever, easy use is a big deal. <laughs> And then you got to see what kind of fees they charge. Yeah, if you could walk down to one of the local banks and walk in the office and sit down with the person that's investing your money, that's probably that might be worth a little bit higher premium. Maybe not. That's but that'll be the choice of the. Right. I think the choice of this would be a vote of the employees. I th I think so. Yeah. I mean, you're, once you make the decision, you're going to stay there. It's yeah. not that easy to move around. Yeah. But like the elevator in Finley Bell does, our little bank. The Laris does ours. Yeah. Um, it's nice to be able to have somebody local that you can contact. Okay. Or semi-local. Okay. So, do you? So you may as well contact the school and get there. They said it's Rorick Financial, I believe. Okay. A pretty big player. R O R E. R R R R O E. Rorick. I C H. Oh, I mean, oh, I see. The, the way it sounds, that the commission is going to be kind of separate from this whole process. We need to decide what the contributions rates yes. are going to be, but I don't think we really have a dog in the fight over who is going to administer the program. But I'm just going to ask that that uh, mm -hmm. that Troy, maybe you would. Be willing to sit in on a few of the interviews. I can do that if uh, if the employees would want that. Right. Okay. But I would make that a suggestion that the employees would ask that Troy would come and sit in on a few <coughs> interviews. Okay. And maybe you want to form a committee um, amongst your employees that uh, so then you don't have to try to get everybody together. Right. When the night when it's, you get somebody to show up or. So, I guess I message you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. David, now I think we're ready for you. We're late, but we're ready. 
Um, let's see. I don't know where, if we want to discuss the the egg land. I, I think it's. I think it was included in your packet. Um, yep. Uh, you see in the column for 2017. That's where the county was at. That the average egg land value was six hundred forty-two dollars and eighty-six cents. And this, by by December 31st of every year, the state sends. Um, Sends what the what their estimate of the value is, and so last year their estimate was seven hundred thirteen dollars and eighty one cents. So the county was at ninety percent tolerance. Um, this year, right now, what is currently on the books is six hundred forty two dollars and eighty seven cents. Um, they raised the twenty one dollars and ninety cents. Yep. That um, <laughs> yeah, they said um, December thirty first. They sent that to the office. The actual so, sales that I've watched over the course of 2018 and late 17, the values have gone down. Nothing yeah. to do with sales. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it has nothing to do with reality. No. It has to do with productivity. Yeah. And a formula that we've tried, tried, tried to get a hold of from NDSU that caused one person to quit because of it, and we've never got the formula. Yeah, because it starts with their, I don't know where, NDSU has a gross returns that come, that they collect from some source, I don't know where it is, and then they start with the gross figure, and then they do a number of revisions to that number, divide it, multiply it with the number of things, and then they get to, then they take that rolling, they look at the last 10 years, throw out the highest year, throw out the lowest year, and then... Um, and then come to this es this estimate, and then we have to be within the ninety percent of that. So um, right now, right now the tolerance level then is at eighty eighty seven percent, and then the proposal A B C D. That's what you can see what the numbers would be if you if the commission circuit's decision if you increased the egg land values by three percent. Would have six hundred and sixty-two dollars and sixteen cents as our average egg land value, and that would be right on the nose, ninety percent exactly. Um, with B, that would be three point five percent. C, then would be a little bit above the tolerance, and then you can see four percent, five percent, nine percent. That's what you can see what what our egg land value would be, as well as the tolerance level. Um, I think if you did it right at ninety percent on the nose, the the state might um, might mandate. I I don't know what the exact century code is for the. I don't think the tolerance is in the century code, but I don't. I keep keep hearing that that the county has to be within the ninety percent tolerance. So, so um, the, those are kind of, that kind of where it stands, and it's up to you guys how much. Um, if you if you don't increase it, I'm I'm pretty sure that come August equalization, the state would um, would mandate an increase, and, and they probably wouldn't do it only three percent to get within ninety percent tolerance. They might raise it. Um, last time they didn't. The last time they made us raise them, they they just let they let them go to ninety. They did. Okay. It would be pretty hard. It would be pretty hard to. And I've had this discussion with them. It'd be pretty hard to uh, claim they weren't being punitive if they raised it more than what the what they would let us raise it. Um, the argument has always been, okay, if the SNDSU came up with these figures, they'll show us the figures they came up with. They won't show us the actual math that got into the figures. Um, I've never been there, but I, I, I. I how they get to those numbers, I, I think, is akin to Harry Potter and the magic wand. They raise it over, and here's what it should be, and here's what we want it to be, and and this will this will keep the value of the state as high as we as we deem it should be. And it doesn't matter; the land values have went down 30, 40 percent. We mandate you raise land values because that is a, that is in the state's best interest because we need more equity because that leaves our bonding power up where we think it should be. Um, and the only way we can do that is to let some entity that, that can't be subject to the open records 
process get the numbers for us? Again, how how did you get how did they how did they arrive at those numbers? We want to see the we want to see how they arrived at those numbers, and that's never have been able to do that. So they leave it up to they leave it up to the county commissioners to be the bad person here, and I'm sick of it. Unfortunately, what they'll do is they'll come and they'll make Samantha do it. That's what happened before. <laughs> so I think we she should put up a fight, but did she went down swing? <laughs> Been training, maybe you can put up a little tougher ball this time. Yeah. <laughs> Get a little jab, cleaner. jab. <laughs> so we should go to six, six, three, sixteen cents. The A one, or you said? Yeah. Six, six, three. Doesn't have to be a percentage. Say or say that again. You want you wanted it six hundred sixty-three dollars. Okay. Then it'll be just a hair over ninety. Okay. Because I. Because what? Because what? what I, for for making the change just on the Dakota program. Six hundred and thirty-five. Yeah. Hmm? About six hundred and thirty-five. Then they're gonna have Amanda by her earlobe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A stick and I will will bring dire consequences. Be after us. Six six three. Would you need a motion to do that? All right. I'll make that a motion. Just one second. Been moved by Mark that we raise the egg land values to six hundred and sixty three dollars and sixteen cents for Is that to be instruct is that your recommendation? It would, it would be a little bit easier if it just went a flat percentage because when the I three percent when I entered in the when I when I go on the Dakota programs to make the, the you change. can't put a decimal in there. What you can't put a decimal. Well, in there? All, there's so there's no because everything is split up by all the different soil types. There's yeah. 20, 20 odd that are oh, sure. in there, and so so I don't have any one number where it says six hundred sixty two. No. It's it's a it's an amalgamation of all the different soil types, and then. This is the average when you factor in all the number of acres of each soil. So six six two one six is actually easier than six six three. Yeah. Well, just no, because of the percentage. He no, just applied three yeah, percent no, across. No, he yeah. just applied three percent across yes. the Dakota programs. Because then yes. I can apply and three percent. That, that raised every one of the soil types that raised every. Yeah. Because yeah. it makes it makes it easier to. Because then I'm yeah changing each of the soil types by three percent versus you do six hundred sixty three. Dollars. I'm still gonna have to figure out. It's gonna. I'm gonna figure out what that percentage is, and then three and then point one that. five six one five nine zero oh, nine <laughs> nine oh, <laughs> four zero. Yeah, and then I mean I can. And there's, there's I can do that. Every water is long. So uh, it should be the same either way. Yeah, it shouldn't be a big I mean, deal. Yeah, you know you're assuming that we vote for it. Yeah. But I'm just saying it can be obtained the percentage. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did anybody second it? Not yet. I'll second it. I was hoping you wouldn't, because he. W I mean, so you got to put a percentage in every every soil class. He'll just enter the one, he'll just enter the three percent and it will propagate that across the whole program. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so it can be three point yeah. one yeah. five. So. Yep. Well then yeah, I'll enter that for the twenty classes or so. Yeah. Yeah. They make it easy. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. John? No. Dale. All right. Mark. Aye. Sean? No. Try votes aye. Motion carries. I haven't voted for it yet. I ain't missing the issue. Who said six? I'm sorry. 66316. Six, 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 six,
Six six three point one six. Yeah, a dollar more than <laughs> dollar more than the three percent. I just didn't want it to be exactly ninety percent. Yeah. So it's Call this tax equalization meeting to order. We didn't. Yeah, have yeah you were. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. Because we should have been in recess from the commissioner's meeting. Hmm? We should have been in recess for the commissioner. Do it over. Do it over. Do it over. I make a motion we call that we recess uh, our commissioner's meeting. Second. Been moved by John, seconded by Sean that we go into recess for the commissioner's meeting in order to hold the tax equalization meeting. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Same sign. Motion carries. Can I just no, no, you know, you close this out and then you'll have to have minutes for the. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Call us. Oh, we're, 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 we're this way till she gets this set up. You guys are okay, you go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, you cut and paste. Call it tax equalization meeting to order. Now, Jamie, you want us to leave this in session or just recess it? Recess it. Good. I, it's I make I make a motion that we recess the tax equalization meeting. Do we need to make a motion first? Do we have to redo? No, that's commissioners that do that, right? That okay. raise the value of the land. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. That had nothing to do with the tax equalization. No. Meeting. Been moved by John to recess the tax equalization meeting. Is our second to the motion? Seconded by Sean. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any future to further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. No, that is the, 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 the that isn't part of the tax equalization meeting. The discussion no. about no, the no, land no. values. No, no, no. That's tax maximization, not equalization. <laughs> Um, when you table this, um, it's tabled until June 22nd at 2 o'clock. Do I still do? It's in recess, yeah. Recess, recess yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else? Um, well, the, the only person, people that are anticipating being here for equalization to bring up. Oh, call the meeting back to order. Go ahead. Uh, let's see. Um, so cent Central Plains had, had rebuilt their steel bins that collapsed and added a bunker. Yep. Um, the Greenfield Township and their assessor um, felt it was kind of out of their hands to, to do that assessment. Um, so they want the county to determine a value on um, for that, because right now the, the figure that's on the books doesn't reflect having, having the steel bins in that bunker that they built out there. Where um, the steel bins are before? No, they collapsed and then yeah, but they rebuilt them. So can yeah, I go did, back to did the they lower their taxes while they were yeah, on the, the ground? Yeah, the value wasn't on there. They, they hadn't been assessed yet when they collapsed. Oh, so, okay. But so the county has a professional appraisal that was done in 2015. And those bins weren't there. They were in the appraisal, but I don't think that was adopted by the township and the county, which it shouldn't shouldn't have been because that. Bins weren't, weren't up. They shouldn't. Um, they were part of the, so they were part of the appraisal that was that was prepared by the Crown appraisal. Okay. Um, when it came time, then to that was in the summer of 2015. I, from what I understand, I've been trying to piece mm -hmm. together the records. Um, 
So then when it came time to add those, that would have been 2016. I think the bins had collapsed by then. So that value was taken off. Um, so I'll pretty much I'll be proposing on equalization. We we go back to I think the county paid paid a good amount of money for having the appraisal done, so we may as well instead of having it reappraised again now yeah. to see what uh, they're at. Just reinstate the value. Yeah. Yeah. They so added but the, the and then oh they added the bunker. Right? Is there a value from the previous bunker? So um, I don't think it's the same dimensions. I think it's a slightly smaller one. Um, so I've been I've been visiting with one everyone on the same page. So I was visiting with with Greenfield Township and showed them what the appraisal said. Um, I shared it with Central Plains so they know what um, what the appraisal said. Um, Central Plain there are they um, they had a few questions, a few disagreements with what um, the appraisal had for a. Um, for the economic life of the different equipment and property. Um, they, they're finding they had to replace some of the equipment a lot quicker than, um, than what the appraisal would estimate. So that, like they, they're, they make the case that it should be, um, more depreciation should be taken into account for um, what's on the appraisal and have a, um, so have a lower, lower value. Um, so I have, a, I have a copy of the, appraisal that's been prepared by the Crown appraisals, and then I have a copy of what Central Plains was making their, their case for what should be the value. Um, they'll... The owner doesn't get the pick. How, how, do, yeah, how does appreciation play into the value at this point? I think it, they were making the case if it's... Because, uh, again, I, I don't know this is out of my... This is out of my league. Um, they would be making the case that um, for depreciation that it would be that property, say it's say it's a conveyor, um, if it's depreciating depreciating quicker, that property that would be less valuable. So there should be a less value for um, for the assessment. We don't treat any other taxable property that we're we're, we're not. We're not if if it is if it is really depreciating, the taxable value is on the land, not on the equipment. It's on it's on what the, what sits on the land, and we don't we don't depreciate any other taxable property that way. I don't think we do. Yeah, I think well, I think Central Plains is the only one that we have a or that in the Sutton bins. I think that's the only one that we have a um, a detailed breakdown of what things are assessed I don't think like for the elevators here for um, for Cheyenne tooling I don't think we have a, we don't have a I don't well we have a number in the Dakota programs books but I don't know what those are yeah, what, if that was the case the wind towers would be able to depreciate those too wouldn't they I mean so yeah, I, I, I mean, I, well, this is, I have well, nine months in this job, so I don't know. I, I haven't seen the appraisal, but I can only imagine that the reason that, that the life of that equipment plays into it is when they're doing the, um, the valuation using a cap rate. I mean, there's going to be there are multiple ways of... The approach, an appraisal approaches the property several from several directions. Mm -hmm. Now, when you do the cap rate, <coughs> I don't know how detailed of a, it must be really detailed if they're doing that. So you have a, <coughs> if you assign a life expectancy to all of that equipment, <coughs> then through the cap rate, the return on the pro investment calculation the quicker that has to be replaced, the lower the value would be. It's no, only, I, I understand it. Right. So it, it's just we don't do that on any other properties in Greeks County. I mean, you build a building, you you don't get you don't get to yeah you don't get to name the the life of that the capitalization rate span of that building. It, no doubt it might may, maybe that's the way to do it. But if we if we don't do it for one, we can't. If we don't do it for all we can do right. for one. No, I mean, what the appraisal is supposed to do is 
give us an idea of what the thing would sell for if it was for sale today. Heck, we can't even do it on the land. So if they're <laughs> if they're depreciating, say, their conveyors and you know wear parts, and well, wouldn't that make a curve like this every time to replace a conveyor mm -hmm. than the next exactly. appraiser? Why would you want to play that game? I don't know. Well, because. I mean, uh, I, I would. I would. Are we going to get their maintenance schedule? So that's what I mean. Replace the motor. If I was the order, I would play that game too because I knew that, that it would only be this way and it would never be this way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you never. How are you going to? How are you going to then? There is no reporting sequence to when they right. upgrade, right? Yeah. So, so but you again, if you the get a lower to start with, then it'll probably stay. There. The argument's got to be that we can't treat one different than any than than everybody else. It is what it is, and that's, and then you know, it isn't capitalization rate that is the only factor in determining value, it, it's also income. Mm -hmm. And on commercial properties, that, that's supposed to be the major. The same way farmland, it, it's not the value of the farmland, what it sells for, it's the income it produces. And if, if we're going to go to a production form of, of value and taxation, that has to be across the board. So what I'll what I'll do is, um, I th I th Green, Greenfield. Someone from Greenfield might be here. Um, Central Plains will send someone. Um, in the meantime, I'll send you the send you what the appraisal appraisals that we have, um, and send you what Central Plains was arguing arguing should be the value, and then right, you guys can. I kind of stay out of it. I I don't know well enough. It's. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a good tax equalization guy, when he, yeah. <laughs> and, and 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 here here's the converse of that, of why we have to do it that way. The yeah, the bank building that just that was that was on the books at six hundred thousand dollars value. Sure. It was because of the income it was bringing in. It's no longer on the books for that. Why did the, yeah. did the building lessen in value? No, the, the amount of money it could bring in was lessened in value. So if if you do it that way and let people lower it because of the loss of income, then you have to keep it high because of the income. Okay. So, I mean, that was the only person I was anticipating being here this afternoon for equalization. So, yeah. But we'll, um, I'll, I'll email, well, I'll email that to you, Sam, those appraisals, um, and if you forward them on. Yeah. Absolutely. I think we, Otherwise, every time they're going to put in a new chain, well, then they'd have to raise their taxes. Raise it up. And then drop That's it. the way it would be if it was in Grand Forks. Because they'd have to get a building permit. Yeah. Well, and they, that they would have building permits in Greenfield Township. Yeah, that was another thing that, uh, oh. that they raised that for Central Plains is a bit frustrated with the township because the township charges them for building permits. I don't know what it, what exactly, they didn't say how much it was, but. Um, that Greenfield so, charges them, and but so everywhere else, Central Plains builds, they gotta pay. Sure. Then the one, or then another thing, uh, and um, for the valuation for the new bunker that they put in, because that's something that wasn't in the appraisal from 2015. Um, right now, I've entered it as I haven't been out there to see and what the dimensions are compared to what there was one bunker that was on there in 2015. Um, Right now, I have the value listed at what they submitted on their building permit. Um, if you want to go by that, if you want to put another figure, it's your guys' discretion. Um, but right now, that was the one. That's the one piece of equipment that was that's out there right now that wasn't included in the 2015. How about that tank farm? The uh, propane yeah. tanks. Yeah, that's yeah, that, it, was, that was that was done a, separately. It's a separate parcel. Um, and for that one, I don't under I don't know why I haven't been able to find the record keeping of it. That one is actually s about two hundred thousand dollars more than what the professional appraisal appraisal suggested. Um, so I think if we're gonna if we're gonna raise Central Plains to reflect what the appraisal says, Central Plains um, doesn't own the tank. CHS does. Yeah. So we would I think we should to be fair is fair just. Be consistent, but go by didn't, what the appraisal. Did that get built and then it got added to? Is that why? Maybe. I don't know. It's it's four point seven millions on the books right now, and the professional appraisal suggests four point five. And I mean, there's a little slight difference. But Thank you. Guys. So um, I haven't been able to find the records of how or when or why that was entered on the books. So 
I think we should just go by what the. I, I don't have the assessment expertise to say what everything is worth, so we have a professional appraisal. What does Greenfield charge them guys for building permits? I'm not sure. I'm not sure they didn't say that. They were rather Central Plain was kind of nonplussed about it, but is it a percentage of the project cost? Or? I don't know. Whatever they want, to, whatever they want to. No, the reason I ask because I was talking to a carpenter yesterday from Carrington. Well, the city of Carrington charges five percent of the project cost for a building permit. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> That's not wrong, isn't it? Think. Mm. If you're going to build a four hundred thousand dollar house, you just pay two thousand dollars for the building permit. It's more than that. It's twenty thousand dollars. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. So maybe they, maybe they don't do that in residential. Maybe it's just commercial. Yeah, it's one of millions of dollars. Then it really gets to be a good check. Well, that that causes a lot of trouble with that CHS plan. plan that yeah. Always for always a plan going against. So that's one of the reasons that eventually I think that thing fell apart was because they wanted a couple million dollars for building permit. Yeah. Bureaucracies never complain because they have too much money. Ever. Do we, uh, would I have to ask for an amendment of the, of the, of the agenda in order to bring up the road department? You could. An addition. Huh? An addition. An addition to the agenda? I don't know if we can do it at this point, but I'm going to. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know what even what this is about. But I would say that without having somebody from the road department, we'd yeah. better not talk about it. Okay, that'd be my Jimmy. Does it have anything to do with the new road? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think you're right. I think it should have been a. Yeah. 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 First, we better okay. let Samantha pay her election workers and buy them a dinner. Um. Right now, the. Wages for a poll worker is ten dollars an hour. For the inspector is ten seventy five. Um, asking if perhaps we can raise this. This has been there for years. Um, I guess it's just to see if you if we can raise it, um, and then if we the county can provide meals like we have in the past. Why are they different? Um, the inspector is just more expertise he's more in charge of more i don't know why it was done differently but i mean he picks up all the supplies he's you know that big what's your recommendation um i i don't know <laughs> i i would recommend yes, that we raise it a little bit you know the i did have we did have the trainings this um the beginning of this week and they're you know they did make a comment that what you know, is it this, now on um, ten dollars an hour and for a um, poll worker and then the inspector is 1075 and what do they want to go to they didn't say anything i haven't got any you know <clears throat> any feedback of what they would like how many hours do they put in um, it's about a little over 12 hours on election day and then um, the training, so about 13, 14 hours per election. How many people? Um, 11, counting the inspector. It's fine where it is. Okay. If someone wants to make a motion to raise it, do that.
you raised everybody two two bucks an hour, it'd be a whopping three hundred bucks, a little bit less. Six hundred dollars this year. Huh? Six hundred dollars this year. True. We're gonna have election in the spring and we'll have a dollar in the fall. True. Um, this year for budget wise, you guys um, just budgeted a lump sum. Um, and so I tried to break it out like I thought we could do. Um, but your guy, you guys budgeted for, let me see here. Um, elections, you guys budgeted 20000 for me. Big number. For the software and all of that stuff, it gets to be, oh. and the ballots to print Pretty them and awesome. postage to send them out. It's, You'll have to spend that again. Excuse me. They say the postage was four or five thousand. You'll have that expense or the printing. Correct. Yeah. You'll have that again for the. Yep. Balls. Yep. Yeah. Seems like we're trying to buy the election, but we weren't. <laughs> <laughs> we're not very good at it. <laughs> no. You can keep the money very well hidden. I agree. Leave as is. Meals. Seven breakfast, ten lunch, seventeen. Supper. This date. Okay, yeah. you got it. Okay. Did you talk to Brock Brand? I did. Um, he, I asked him what he his thoughts were, and he said it was um, possibly from salt from the cars, or a bad mix used. I didn't know what else, what other information to ask him, so that's what I got. He said he saw it too, and he thought it was from salt coming from the cars and or getting a bad mix. It could be from freezing before it cured too. He didn't say anything about that, but that would be their fault, so he wouldn't say anything about that. <laughs> I have I. My dad and grandpa spent 20 years building bins 30 years ago, and that's what my dad thought it was probably from freezing. If it was done late in the year, it would make sense. It was cold when it did it. How do we, uh, how do we get anybody to come and say, yeah, that's what it's from? Hire a structural engineer. Yeah. And we're already paying KLJ. God, I've got to come by and look at that and say, I suppose. Like, I, I suppose it'd have to drill a core and take a core sample. Oh, for crying out loud. Can know. we cost more than what the project is? Mm -hmm. need, need somewhere to put a parking lot anyway. Yeah. No. I mean, is this going <laughs> to <it> continue? <laughs> no. Once, it's, it, once that, once that, that slid off flight. there, because if you look at it, it, there's no rock there. I, I yeah. don't think it's freezing. I think it's, I think it was overworking it. Brought water to the yeah. top. Over, the over trolling it is what my yeah. experience with that is. So once it's once it's flaked off, it'll be fine. It'll just stay that way. Yeah, it'll, it'll be, be rough, rough heavily. Yeah. yeah. Then you don't need salt. Well, then people don't sleep. <laughs> you know, freezing will, <clears throat> freezing will make it pop out in chunks. But when you, this one doesn't look that way. It looks like it, the it's paste, all the paste on top. That's it's so. just that skim on the yep. <clears throat> surface. Yeah. But I don't know if he trolled. I don't know if he trolled it. If he, I don't know what they did with it. That's what it looks like to me. Um, did Hope Glass look at that front door? Do you want me to call them? Um, Christy emailed me one day 
And I told <clears throat> I told Lester to come and look at it too. All that's wrong is the closers just aren't pulling hard enough. I, th I think it's the weather stripping. It and is, but yeah. if the closer if the closers would pull harder, mm -hmm. it would, there's a limit to how hard. It feels it. like it catches before it yeah. catches the weather stripping. Oh, yeah. So I went and looked at it. There's no adjustment. I, I thought we could move the hinges. I thought there was adjustment in the hinges. There's not. So the only thing there is is to make the door pull harder. Um, or to lessen the weather stripping. Well, mm -hmm. that's... Is it something that's new and it'll just work its way out of? If it's the weather stripping? When the weather stripping gets more, it gets... Yeah. More. Might. Yeah, that, the email was just to say, like, please remember sure to pull it, pull it but... Yeah, for, for, for some reason, there's like two different them. types of closures on there. They're the same doors, there's one heavy-duty closure and one lightweight closure on it. They're not the same. Oh, aren't they? Did he change it since? I mean, I don't know. I think it got changed. I, I I went and looked at him, and again, you could you could. Well, call Tim Johnson and see if he's been here. If he hasn't, tell him to come look at it. Uh, Tim Johnson from whole class. Whole class, okay. I mean, I could have adjusted him, but I didn't think I'd better no, be screwed. No. I think they should make it work. I don't think we should. Yeah, there's some weather sturks coming out of glazing. Yeah. You know, on the west pan class panels on the inner set. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Old courthouse, new courthouse. Um, we have a, the North Dakota flag um, is wore out, um, and I was informed that we need to replace this. Um, am I able to purchase a new North Dakota flag? Yes. Yes. Okay. Who informed you that? Um, Dennis had looked at it and oh. said, Yeah. Yep. Reliable source. That's it. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Pretty hard to argue with him. Wouldn't want to. Pretty dedicated person. Oh. Sure. Motion to adjourn. So moved by Dale to adjourn, seconded by John. All in favor? Nay. Here, here. Oh, same sign. Motion carries, meeting adjourned. Next meeting will be June 22nd at 1 p.m.